Hi YouTube. You might recall in a previous video that I had reviewed the Westcott Heavy Duty Eye Point School Sharpener, which I felt was an excellent sharpener for use in school or office. As a matter of fact, you can see over here that I have it on my desk and I use it all the time. So in this video, I thought what I would do is talk about the manual Westcott Eye Point Antimicrobial Titanium Bonded Manual Pencil Sharpener. Let's get to it! So this is going to be the first time I'm going to be opening up this package here. So let's just take a look at it before I do. And you can see right here the Eye Point Antimicrobial Titanium Bonded Manual Pencil Sharpener. And on the side of the box tells us that it has a one year warranty, has a tabletop attachment and screw down mounting included, which is great. You see it's made by Westcott here since 1872. And there it tells us handle contain an antimicrobial agent to inhibit the growth of bacterial stains and odors. Titanium bonded dual helical blades stay sharper longer. An easy view shavings reservoir and multi pencil size dial. And I imagine something like this, this antimicrobial agent on the handle, is a good idea in a school or in an office environment where many people are sharing the same sharpener. Now in my case here, I would be the only one using it, so that's a nice benefit, but you know, I could always use the... Hey! But pretty good idea for a, a school. Just little kids wiping their nose, you know, and then they want to touch everything. All right, I digress. Let me go here and look and see what's inside. Well, the first thing I can see here is we have this clamping, and I'll unload that in a second and wrap it. Some instructions. I don't need those thinking instructions. Okay. It's well packed, as you can see, pretty solid, not going anywhere. Lots of packing material to go through here. So let's see what we have. That's a nice looking sharpener. As a matter of fact, I've not ever seen one that looks like this before. This is really kind of unique here. It says antimicrobial right there on the handle. Titanium. And you can see that it has the, the dual helix blades in there as opposed to you know the single helix which works really good. Okay and then I see we have some mounting hardware here. You want to get really Rambo with it and some screws. So, ah, okay, let me see if that, uh, yeah. apparently I just don't like reading instructions. Okay, according to the instructions, let's see what it says here. It says uh, remove the base by lowering uh, by lowering clip at back and sliding forward, insert four screws and holes slide sharpener. Okay, so it's telling me that this thing has a base plate. Ah, it says push. So you push, how do you push? Push this way? How about if I push this way? Uh, push this way. A few moments later it's telling me to lower the clip at the back, so, huh. More moments later. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. Well, we can 
can start off with something that could be improved on, and that's these instructions. Now you know why I don't read instructions. Okay, now let's get to the important thing here. Now that you have the base off, you can actually mount that using these screws. And you just put one here, one here, one here, and one here, and screw it down. And then you will be able to mount your unit. I better take the screws off for now. You'll be able to mount your unit onto a solid surface somewhere, and it won't go anywhere. Now you have two options for mounting, of course. You have the four screws, which is a pretty solid way to mount it. So you, you really want to find a place that you want to keep it uh, pretty much permanently. I mean, you can always unscrew it by doing the old bottom removal thing again. But it's going to be a much more solid uh, mounting if you use the screws. Or you can use this clamp thing here. If you decide to go with this, which is kind of a more temporary way of doing things, um, then you just find yourself an edge of a table and you slide this in like so and then you will slide that where the table will go right in here and you will clamp it down. And you want the handle of course to come off the edge of the table. That would be the clever way to do it so that you don't wrap your knuckles. Then you want to slide the mount through the hole, just like that. And you want to tighten down the butterfly screw there that it comes with, the butterfly nut. Just tighten that down. Nice. Okay, and so that that is another way that you can mount it and that's it's great for temporary uh, because you can just unscrew it there and just remove it and put it wherever you want and this also frees you up so that you can use one hand to hold the pencil and one hand to actually turn the crank but I sharpened this pencil right here using the heavy-duty eye point and I'm going to use this as a comparison for the manual titanium eye point. This one right here, as you can see, there's no point. I busted it off as well as a few others. And if you'll notice that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it looks like eight different sizes that this sharpener will accommodate. So I found the size that I need here for a standard school pencil for example and we'll go ahead and try this okay now there's that one right there You can see that it's a nice long point, but on the other side here, it's, it's not sh exposing the, the lead, and I'm not sure if that's the pencil itself or the sharpener, so I'm going to have to try more than one here. What I'll do is I will... I will clip this off and I'll put it in the heavy duty and see if I come up with the same problem. If I do then I'll have to blame this pencil. So let me try that. Okay, I've I've cut off the tip. And I have the same problem. You see only one side has exposure and the other not so much. So I'm going to say the pencil is at fault here. So I'm going to find a pencil that is true. Now here's one that was sharpened 
with a nice point. I'm going to cut that off and then I'm going to try it again on the There we go, I butchered that pencil again. Yeah, okay, that's good news. There you go. A really nice point, as you can see there. So the quality of the pencil is very important and unfortunately uh, these are not high quality I got these at Walmart they're just standard casemates their casemate premiums are nice but not the standards they're, they're cheap anyway so you wanna definitely get a pencil where the core is centered in in the stock because if it's not centered you're gonna show a lot more lead on one side than the other and now to compare this one here is the manual sharpener right here and then this one right here is the one that was on the titanium I mean the, uh, the electric okay so you can compare right there so they're pretty comparable you can get the same kind of point pretty much from either one I personally like the convenience of, the, of an electric on my desk instead of a hand crank but these are great if you are going to put them in your school or if you want to uh, put it on the wall you know like in a hallway or something in an office environment so that people can use it and you definitely don't want to put it on one of these sliding tables <laughs> not a good idea so there you go alright so let's take another closer look now at this sharpener uh, the aesthetics and the guts. Okay, so let's now take a close look at this. As you can see, there's the eight different pencil openings. You can just turn it like that. Very easy to do. It says Westcott right there in the front, and it points to which opening you want. It's plastic construction. You can see it's a green plastic here. It has a gray plastic base and a kind of a tinted plastic blade housing. And so to empty this, you just turn it like so, and you're going to just slide that out. And I made a mess. That's not good. There you can see the dual helix blades. Okay, let me tell you what I like and what I don't like about this iPoint titanium bonded manual pencil sharpener. I don't like the instructions that one in particular. Notice it says, it says remove base by lowering the clip it back and sliding forward. It needs to specify what do you slide for, the main unit or the base. I assume the base, it meant the main unit. So, just to avoid making me look like a dummy, give me better instructions. That's the part I didn't like, that's minor, but it has nothing to do with the pencil sharpener itself, so we'll get right to the pencil sharpener. One of the things I really like about this pencil sharpener is its looks. I think it looks pretty cool. It has a kind of retro, neon, George Jetson kind of look to it. Kind of reminds me of, you know, having psychedelic Jimi Hendrix posters on the wall, maybe the flower children type posters, you know, the, what's that guy, uh, um, uh, Austin Powers? Yeah, you know, baby! <laughs> look to it. 
And if you don't have that kind of decor going on in your office or home or whatever, I guarantee you one thing, it definitely will fit in the classroom because it does have that really fun look appeal to it. I think it's much more interesting to look at than the other manual pencil sharpeners. But that's just looks. We have to care about how it works. And I have to say, it does a great job sharpening, actually it was this one, sharpening pencils, as you see right here. So it does the job, and I really like that. The other thing I like about this is that you can see when this thing is filling up. That's another nice thing. Uh, and I would suggest that you don't let it fill up because what you have seen me do already is it can easily make a mess. Number one, be sure you put your finger over the hole that the pencil goes in before you attempt to take this off. Number two, slowly take it off and just kind of stick your finger in there real carefully. Don't uh, drag it along the blades and make sure that you can get all the shavings in there and then you can carry it off and dump it. Notice that my finger is there because if it wasn't, you have a hole and stuff will start falling all over the place and I found that out the hard way. So this is the part I don't really like about having, uh, and it's not just this particular manual, but manuals in general that don't use a tray type, which is my favorite is a tray type. So this particular type isn't my favorite as far as disposing, but you can do it if you use some common sense, and that is cover the hole and just slowly take that out. The other thing I like about the unit is that the company, Westcott that is, sent the hardware and made it where you, with the base that you have two different options for mounting. And I like that because there are times when I only get this, I don't get another option of mounting permanently and sometimes I don't get anything. So you may have heard me talk about in one video where I didn't get anything and it was like a $30 sharpener and I'm like it would have been nice if I had gotten a desk clamp but it doesn't come with one. It didn't make sense. And that brings me to another point. I went online to look at where I could buy this. I found there was one, you know, they, they were selling them on a, web, a Walmart website, had them and there was a couple of others and I noticed the pricing was around the $7, like $6.80 all the way to like $7.20. You know, you can't even get a Happy Meal for $7. Bucks. Um, well, wait a minute. It's not that I buy Happy Meals, okay? <laughs> I'm just using that as an example, all right? It's that this is very inexpensive for what it does, and I think it's pretty awesome. It should last a very long time because not only does it feel very strong and sturdy, and the plastic does not feel flimsy at all, but feels very strong. The blades are titanium bonded. What does that mean? What it means, though, is that it provides corrosion resistance. It causes the metal itself that the titanium is bonded to to be actually stronger. It allows for the blades to stay sharper longer. So you should get many, many sharpenings out of this before you have to do any kind of blade replacement, which I have no idea if it's worth replacing the blades because at $7, you can throw it away and buy another one. It's not expensive whatsoever. All right. That takes me to these holes. You got eight of them here. I happen to like the fact that I have a choice. Why? Because in my studio, not only do I have regular number two pencils that everyone else has in school and office, but I have art pencils that will not fit that hole unless I have an option like this one gives me where I can fit it. I also have half graphite carbon pencils that have even a thicker shaft that would fit in here. And in my garage, I have very, very jumbo pencils that will love being able to go into that receptacle there. I intend on using this sharpener in my garage so that I can sharpen those big fat pencils because having something to do that really nice and quick is really awesome when I'm doing woodwork. Why won't I use it in my office? Because I've got the Westcott Electric Heavy Duty Sharpener, which is, of course, faster and more convenient 
than me having to mess with a hand crank. So I'll have the electric on my desk where it is. This will be out in my garage and I'm covered. All right. Well, now you know what I like and what I don't like about the Westcott iPoint antimicrobial titanium bonded manual pizzle sharpener. Oh, maybe I should say another thing I don't like is that there's just way too many words to describe this thing. <sighs> Please give me a thumbs up if you like the review. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Leave your comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.